whatever next, eh? We've now been told that more than, well, 100 schools are affected by a form of concrete. This is ordinary concrete. Yeah, ST1 mix, I would say. It's not aerated concrete, you might get the odd little air bubble in it. But many of these schools that have been affected uh, were built using RAAC concrete, reinforced aerated autoclaved concrete in the form of a plank. Basically, they got, well, iron bars running through them and uh, aerated concrete. And the aerating is done a process called autoclave, which is um, basically steam, hot steam, and it creates the bubbles. Well, where there's the hot steam, there's moisture mm, trapped in these bub bubbles for, for years. Now, I've worked on these buildings in the past, yeah, when Tony Blair was doing his education, 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 and huge investment in school buildings to get rid of the old, um, oh, mobiles, if you remember those old things with terrilene finish on the outside. Boiling hot in the summer and freezing cold in the winter. Not good for, you know, for the, you know, to get the old brain cells moving, is it? It's not a good environment to, to learn in or teaching. Now, pff, crikey, the things I had to do with this flipping RAAC concrete, it's just from cutting a hole in it. It's like putting powder it was. It was rubbish. You might get one bit, it was okay. You also get a situation where you'd find that there's no iron bars in the ends of the planks of the RAAC concrete. Structurally, that's not great, is it? When it's sitting on top of a wall to support itself, or actually the roof. Now, if you don't know what RAAC concrete was used for, it was often used to create these long, well, concrete planks, aerated concrete planks. And they'd be inserted between between beams and what have you. And sometimes they'd be just, just, just like, like tongue grooved together. Now they, they had the, their uses, what have you, they seemed like a great material at the time. But even at the time, their lifespan was only 30 years. That's the, that's the official lifespan of this material. 30 years? Well, you do all that kind of construction for 30 years life? For, for a whole roof? Yeah, obviously these are flat roofs, you see. They'll be rubber coated, they'll be uh, maybe uh, metal or torch on felt, or whatever it might be. Resin bond, I don't know, fiberglass, whatever. Unfortunately, this stuff breaks down over a period of time. The concrete is known to, to well, they, they say it lives for about 50 odd years, and, well, I say lives, <laughs> it lasts 50 years and it starts breaking down, if not before. Aerated concrete is worse than that. Like I say, it's moisture trapped in the bu bubbles, which breaks down the concrete, but also breaks down and causes, like, like a concrete cans, where the actual um, iron bars inside the concrete, they corrode and they expand, they blow the surface of the concrete, and it just becomes all crumbly over a period of time. Now think of an aero bar. You know the aero bar, is it round trees aero bar? Mint and orange and chocolate flavour? <laughs> well, that's what it's like inside. You have less aggregate, like you've got in this piece of concrete here, there's a huge amount of large aggregate. With aerated concrete, the aggregate is much smaller. And it's, um, so you've, got, you've got a loss of strength there. Now you could argue that the aerated concrete was um, great in the sense of, of environmental because there's about half the volume in there, there's a lot less volume. So a lot less movement of, well, of the materials and what have you, it's a lot lighter, so you can get more on the lorry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because they're basically prefabricated panels. But there's, IAC concrete isn't like pre-stressed concrete in the UK. Now, or anywhere in fact, because pre-stressed concrete would be a piece of concrete like that. But when it says pre-stressed, the reinforcing bars would be pulled and stretched between two points. The car still, the shutter would be around all the reinforce, reinforce, reinforcing, reinforcing rods. And then you'd pour it, and then once it's all gone off, you then release the iron. Um, you know, the, the stress on either end of the iron, you know, like the pre-stressed uh, concrete lentils you can buy in the UK quite cheap. You know, they're all done like that. Got a lot of strength in them, you see, because they're constantly pulling all the time inside the concrete, holding it together. But not with this stuff. There's very little strength in it. Not this stuff, because it's just a piece of concrete, but your aerated concrete. Now, when I was working on this stuff, let's like, say cutting in skylights and stuff like that, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, you should, we shouldn't just leave it alone unless you can provide it with support. Now they're telling us it's just schools. It's not just the schools. No. 
have been affected by this. Now I've worked on all sorts of builds that got RAAC concrete in it. It's been a bait for a long time. It's, um, oh my God, when was it? No. It's 1950s or 1960s, 1960s through to the 80s. They realised that uh, it's such a great material after all. Otherwise, we'd still be using it. Now, I would argue the opposite. I'd say it is a great material used in a different way. I wouldn't use it structurally. No. Never use RAAC concrete or any aerated concrete structurally. But for mass, for volume, if you need volume, it's a great material. Why not? You know? But not above your flipping heads. No, we can fall on your blooming heads. It's stupid. You end up like a bridge down in flipping Italy. Is it Georgia, Georgia, or wherever it was in Italy. <sighs> this is madness. The thing is, the government's saying, oh, we didn't know. That's a lie. That's a blatant flipping lie. The product, 30 years life. Hmm? I like this stuff, which lasts a darn sight longer. <sighs> So you knew that. And it's only been 50 odd years this stuff has been in, in use. The surprised it's lasted that long. And now it's starting to break down. And for any government to say, you know, Gillian Keegan, whatever her name is, you know, the health secretary, uh, the education secretary, to say that it's, um, oh, we didn't know about it, it's bollocks. Absolute bollocks. Now, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Kings Lynn, the one that's held up with all those acro props, has been looking at for several years. Why are they there, the acro props? It's because the roof was built using RAAC planks. Reinforced, autoclaved, aerated concrete planks on the roof. Now, we still use concrete for the roofs of certain buildings. Well, you have an extension even in the UK. You want a concrete roof on, on an extension. You just think called block and beam. But you'd be using the solid blocks, just ordinary concrete blocks quite often that we'd use just to build your walls. They just basically, you've got these pre-stressed uh, uh, um, joists and you drop all the blocks in between and then you might put a concrete on top of that, a screed on top of that, or maybe not. But now we've got a bit of a situation because it's not just the flipping schools, no. We've probably got tens of thousands of these systems in place in the UK. It's been used in office blocks, it's been used in schools, and it's been used in hospitals and many other government buildings. It was a very common building practice back in the 60s and 70s. It really was. Now my dad put pointing this stuff out to me years ago. You know, he, he trained with um, Carters in Norfolk, and uh, so he did his apprenticeship with. And he's used to stuff, he's seen the stuff put in place. He's one who'd be building all the shuttering and stuff in various, um, you know, such in May and Baker site, the old chemical plant in uh, in Norwich. You know, he was one, he, he built all the ventilation systems that all in plywood, laminated plywood. And um, me and my dad had long conversations about this sort of stuff because I was in the game as well, obviously, I was a lot younger <laughs> well, than my late father, but um. Things you you can work. It's not how to put it. It's not rocket science that these things are going to fail. It's not. It never was. And for the government to say they didn't know about this stuff, it's been on the cards for donkeys years. In fact, back in 2015, they actually um, created a fund. I think it was about 15 billion. I don't think they spent it or used it or it's probably just been brushed to one side. It's been a fund um, to support the buildings, government buildings built in this fashion. They just all they've done is over the years. Don't tell anybody until there's a problem. Well, there was a problem. A school's roof collapsed. Luckily, it collapsed on the weekend. So nobody got killed. It might be aerated concrete, but the stuff ain't fluffy and floats. No. It weighs a flipping bomb. On your head. Kids' heads. Fragile. I think anybody working in these buildings, especially now we've got to that period, obviously it's getting to a time now where these buildings, are, well, they, they, they come to the end of their life. OK, so what are we going to do then? What, rebuild them? No, we need to do remedial works now. The problem is when you do this, these remedial works, it's very dusty, very dirty, potentially asbestos problems there as well, health, health issues. The kids can't be in the building when you're doing those that kind of work. All the hospitals can't obviously function either. No. See, this material is also very good in the hospitals because the autoclaving uh, it actually sterilised the concrete. So there's no bacteria that trapped in, in the concrete. So it's good for that process. If that 
don't be wrong, the, the material could, it has its place. But structurally, no. Normally with construction work, if, you, if you're building beams and stuff like that, you do a thing called, you, know, you create, a, you have moulds, all right? So the concrete comes in, and you pour your concrete, all right? And then that concrete's got to be passed for that beam, all right? This happened on the Man Baker site years ago. They built this clam beam, my dad on, you know, was on the team doing all the shuttle and what have you, uh, to build this big old, um, you know, massive, great, huge concrete beams. <clears throat> The slump test has to be done, so the slump test is done on site. You have a special little bucket. You fill your bucket up, you know, to the top. You plunk it upside down, and you create a, a, a concrete castle, <laughs> like under the beach, you know? And then what you do is, after pairs, you have to wait, and it slumps. Because it's wet, you see, it slumps. And depending on how far that slumps, will depend on the water volume of the actual concrete and the constituency. It's a bit like doing a hydrometer reading if you brew beer or something like that, you know? But um, it's how far that goes down. If it doesn't pass, we don't pour the concrete. No, we don't use it. It's discarded and we move on, get, get the right mix along. But also, you have to mould a block, like a brick. And that goes to a lab. When you're doing big work like Man Baker site, what have you, a Norwich, the chemical plant, you know, that you have to you create this brick. So you have this like concrete brick, brick like, well, a bit I've chopped off in the garden, but anyway, you send off this concrete um, brick and they'll do tensile st uh, tests, they'll do compression tests, you know, they'll crush it and stuff like that and see how strong this concrete is. And they had this situation down the Man Baker site where that concrete did not pass Structu the structural tests. They got in there with the can goes and had the hammer and destroyed the whole beam. That's probably, I don't know, tens of, probably 100 tons of concrete or something, I don't know, in this one beam. And all the iron and all that as well, all had to be done again. All the shuttering had to be done again. Massive cost. Big huge beam, massive thing. You know, it happens, you see. And the thing about aerated concrete, they don't test it, you see, because they come in as pre, um, these pre-created things and dropped into place, or it could be poured. And it's not, it's not you know, they don't, they don't do any, any testing on it. It's just an assumption that it's okay. It's just madness. The whole thing is <clears throat> absolutely madness. Now, they've said it's got to be removed by 2030. I can't see it. I really can't see it. We've got nowhere to put anybody for a start. So what are we going to have? Are we going to have loads of hospitals and loads of schools with acro props everywhere? Hmm? The stuff has either got to be completely removed or you've got to do remedial work. If the concrete has already started breaking down, gone all crumbly and a bit shitty, well then you've got no choice. You have to at least remove it. There isn't really any remedial work you can do. You, it has to go. If it's in place and it's in its sound, but what they'll have to do is they'll have to do remedial work. Basically, they'll have to create some more structure or something to um, reinforce this concrete. Either way, whatever they do is going to be a huge cost. God's sake. <laughs> they've, known, they've known about this for flipping donkey's years. For decades, they've known about this. At least 10 years, if not 20. And they did nothing. Nothing. It stated that they had a 30-year life. Not 50, 30-year life. life. Well, back in, um, oh, crikey. Uh, was it? I started monitoring it. They only started monitoring it in 2018. That's it, when it was 2018, they started monitoring this concrete. They didn't have a very good job, did they? Not when that school's roof collapsed. I just find the whole thing flipping painful. We had a period of time when Tony Blair was in government. You might love him, or you might hate him, you know, but oh, he's war criminal and stuff like that. But as far as the schools are concerned, a massive amount of, um, of funding went into schools. You must remember all those old mobiles I flipped and just put there because of the Tories and obviously the growing capacity of the schools. They got rid of them all. Also, the toilet blocks and what have you, they all. Um, Changed and massive amount of money was spent. New schools were built. But not under these Tories. No. The Conservative Party, all they've done is destroy every flipping thing. And it's painful. The real, real pain is the fact that people vote for them. What does it say about those who did? 
especially back in 2019, you had a choice then, you know. You didn't have to vote for Boris Johnson, make things shit look, yeah, dance like worse. See, that's what concrete is supposed to look like. It's not supposed to be full of airs. You might see full of airs, a few little air pockets in it, but that's not a bad bit of concrete, you know. That's, that's not structural concrete, but it's, you know, it's, it's solid. You know, it's probably, God knows how many years old. How long have I been here? Is there before? So, I wouldn't be surprised. That's 20, over to 20, 30 years old. And it's density in it. It's got density. Now, I'm not a lover of concrete. I'm a bit of an old traditionalist. I love proper natural materials, but I do appreciate in modern days, it's not possible to build like that anymore. You know, with huge mass, it's got to be shifted from point A to point B, whether it be stone or stuff like that. Or, you know, it's just, um, we should be looking differently, you see, looking at things differently. Build that cedar. It grows quick and fast and strong and it's pest resistant. That's it. Build everything out of cedar and it would look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> anyway, you tell me. Maybe you've worked on buildings like this, because I have, and I've seen it so many times, because these two contracts you see with, with um, <coughs> for the councils, what have you, um, and building regulation approval. Not approval, so. <sighs> Planning a. Yeah. Building regulation. We used to do a lot of remedial works, you see. Not on the schools, we did it on houses and stuff like that, underpinning and stuff like that, but... Oh, I don't know. It's just a flipping mess. <laughs> they, reckon, they reckon buildings are bad in France. You're kidding, aren't you? No. Blimey. Anyway, you tell me. Please leave it in the comments down below. Have you worked on these kind of buildings? Have you, you know... Are you worried about uh, your child's safety? Are you worried of laying there in bed, maybe? Maybe you've got to go to the hospital, you have an operation, some sort of procedure that you probably waited three years for, you know, to get your, uh, your appointment, and you're, you're looking up at the bloodstained ceilings, and uh, I think, hang on, is that going to collapse on me anytime soon? Yeah, you tell me. Please leave it in the comments down below. I'll tell you something, broken Britain, eh, when you say, ta-ta. Don't forget, people, they're like, button.